Well, we're just going to, because this is the, a, a, a formal meeting, we're going to open the, the meeting of the Appropriations Committee. This is the November 17th meeting. Those members in attendance are Eric Madison. Russell Denver. Jim Broderick. Jim Walsh. Sam Pizzanelli. John Starks. Rocco Caravetta. Okay, for the record, I'll also note that this is being taped by LCAP for future broadcast. And if anybody else is taking the meeting, please identify themselves. Mark Rocco. Thank you, Mark. Does any other board need to open? Be good. Yeah, we'll open. We'll open. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, so the reason that we invited you here tonight um, to, to meet with us is we, we've kind of uh, pieced together um, what we think the FY17 budget picture and beyond, quite frankly, uh, is going to look like. Um, with that, uh, we have some recommendations. Um, but we really, what we're hoping for tonight, I'm going to do a, a short presentation, but what I'm really hoping for is some dialogue between the elected boards and the Appropriations Committee <clears throat> in terms of the, those recommendations. We feel pretty strong that we need to take some action um, now and not wait till it's too late, but we also feel pretty strong that these types of decisions are really a community decision and shouldn't be made in a vacuum. So that's really the intent of the meeting here tonight. So with that, I'm, I'm going to get started. Uh, there was no remote, so I'm going to have to change my slides manually on the computer. So just bear with me during that. So the Appropriations Committee is um, growing really concerned with the tax rate climbing over the last 10 years. And of course, this, this kind of illustrates Incidentally, if you hadn't noticed, the, the, um, the slide reads from the right to the left on, on it, if you will. Um, but it, it demonstrates and illustrates our tax rate over the last 10 years since 2007. And as you can see, there's a steady climb and a steady increase. If you were to look at 10 years prior to this, you would see increases and then drops and then increases and then drops. And the drops correspond to the property value or revaluations. So obviously the reason for the climbing tax rate is the lack of growth in property values. Again, this one reads from the right to the left. But you can see in 2007, in 2008, in 2009, we saw steady and constant increases as we did years prior to that in the property values. Then of course in 2008 when everything crashed, it really hit us after 2009. And you can see our property values plummeted and since then have not really gained, regained much. In fact, uh, we did the, the math the other night, and in the last 10 years, it was, what, 1.69% 1 1 growth in the last five years of our, of our uh, um, property values. Every year? No. no over. Total. Over. Yeah. So it's really been minimal. It's really been minimal. New growth has also been uh, extremely low. Last year we had a spike uh, because of actually because of some cases that were won in court. Uh, but uh, outside of that, um, new growth has also been uh, minimal. And, and that's represented by, we all know, you don't see the houses going up at the pace that we had grown accustomed to prior to the, to the crash. And uh, assessors are recommending to reduce new growth. Yeah, that's right. So in conversations with the assessors um, for the next few years at any rate, um, their advice is for us to use in our budget process uh, a little bit less, uh, about probably it's what about 75% of what we have used in prior years in our budget calculations for new growth. So we're only using about $300,000 in anticipated new growth in our budget calculations. So, <clears throat> the problems, because the real estate property values have remained flat over the last 10 years, the increases to our budget have been mostly absorbed by the tax rate. Without the property values going up, the tax rate to absorb the increases in our budget has been constantly going up. Under the tax limitations of Prop 2.5, our tax rate cannot go over $25 per thousand valuation exclusive of debt exclusions. 
So any debt exclusions that we've had for special projects, I think uh, we have a, well, Birchland Park is an example of a debt exclusion. Uh, the library, um, I think the fire station's paid off now, but the fire station was another example of a debt exclusion. So in other words, our expenses are starting to outpace our ability to generate revenue. It's that simple. Again, here's our tax rates, 2007 up till 2016. You can just see it's a, it's a pretty steady uh, climb all the way up. Rather than a graph, I thought I'd give you the numerics. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I want to kind of overview our um, budget projections for FY17 in the um, real estate and personal property taxes assuming we use the full levy limit the tax is estimated at $21.50 the tax rate that should read uh, is estimated at $21.50 without debt exclusions $21.93 with debt exclusions or an 81 cent increase on the tax rate is that, how's that 81 cent increase? Is it 21.50 to 21.93? No, it's 21 .50 without the debt exclusions. When you tack on the debt exclusions, it'd be 21.93. Our current rate is 21.12, so yeah. 21.12 to oh. 21.93. Right. Yep. Without right. Thank you. Local receipts, we're using a, a 4% increase in our local receipts. Most of that is due to the meals tax, which kicked in starting October of this year. We don't have a real good sense on it yet. Obviously, it just started. Uh, but based on the DOR figures, we think this is pretty reasonable. State aid, if anybody has a crystal ball and knows more about the state aid than, than we can come up with, by all means, uh, I'd like to hear it. But we're assuming a half a percent increase. That's based upon recent history. If you look at the last, I think we used five years, the last five years of state aid, uh, it averages about a half a percent overall increase. The categories change, some go down and some go up, but when you sum it all together, it's about a, a half a percent increase. So our total revenues would be 56345000 or just over $2, uh, $2 million above last year. At this rate, the town will exceed the $25 tax cap by FY24, and that's illustrated in this sheet. If we use a, um, a small growth in our property values, which we've seen over the last six years, it doesn't even buy us a, a, a year. It, it would bump it up, we would exceed it a year later, but if you notice in 2014, we'd exceed it by 50 cents. So it's somewhere in 2013, 14, that we would exceed that $25 per thousand cap. That's only seven years away, six or seven years away. If we don't start taking action now, we're gonna hit this ceiling short of any turnaround in the real estate market. And nobody I've talked to can give me any much optimism in the real estate um, value, property value market. So. Is there a revaluation coming up soon? We just had it. Yeah. yeah. 2016 values were. So, that. historically, though, how, how do towns uh, tax to the levy on an annual basis and not reach this threshold like we're potentially going to? We're not do? alone. This is happening around the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Because of values? Yeah. The, really, what, what, what really it did it was the real estate market crash. It's, yes. It's, it's, we're, we're all still suffering the effects from that. It's just taken right. to this point for us to really, for it really to catch up to us. Um, if it doesn't turn around in anywhere from you know five to seven years, if we continue to tax to the maximum levy capacity, we're going to hit bottom. What happens when we do that? Any increases are absorbed by you know laying off of employees, reduction in services. I mean, you you simply can't. There are no options. You simply cannot tax more than twenty five dollars per thousand. What's the growth projection though in terms of? Uh, evaluations, so is it about a 1%? Is that what the it's, assumption is? It's 0.28. I looked at the past six years, 
And when um, I looked from six years ago to now, it's only raised 1.69% overall. In six years? In six years. And That's so that averages to a 0.28% um, increase. So, I mean, right now the market is pretty flat. It's not looking great. So we did not, this is our conservative estimate that if the property values don't change, even if they do change slightly, that then it would do that. But property values, they haven't really changed in six years. So what makes us think that in the next six is really going to change? The, the, the um, assessor's office is seeing a slight uptick in um, moderately priced homes, um, you know, your, your Less than 300,000. Yeah, less than 300,000, your ranches and, and those types of homes are seeing a slight uptick. By that I mean the houses that are selling are selling for a little bit more than their assessed value. That's positive. The problem is all the other properties, particularly, you know, anything above that, you get up into the four or five, six hundred thousand dollar range and they're not selling for, if they're not selling or if they are selling, they're selling below their assessed values. Overall, they're just not seeing the, the growth that we need. There's two questions. Um, I see the tax rate we have for FY 2017 is 21.50. That that's a potential. Okay. So what's so we're not doing the 21.93 that you mentioned just. This is before. these these are uh, these are without the debt exclusion that okay. you know, because the the cap is doesn't count the debt exclusion, so it's exclusive of the debt exclusion. And we didn't tax the levy last year, am I correct? Correct. We did not tax the levy. That's correct. correct. That's what that yeah. red, do you see it? The levy gap in the actual fifth fiscal 16? 16. I You might see it better in, on your slide. Yes. Yeah. 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 Is this projection assumed? It is yes. assumed to the levy. It is yes. assumed to the tax levy minus debt exclusion. So what would happen is you would have your tax rate at twenty one fifty plus your debt exclusion, yeah. which would then raise it to the twenty one ninety three. So in the seven years when we get to twenty twenty four, right there it says you know you couldn't hit more than the twenty five dollars, yeah. but you could still have a tax rate at say twenty six dollars because that extra dollar could be your debt exclusion. Currently, we have four items on debt exclusion, and through 2024, um, we do still have some of those still there. Yeah, so. we're going to ask for a whole bunch more. Of this. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> but that's a dream. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so in the uses category, some uh, some assumptions in known increases that we're using in our calculations: retirement increase of about eight percent. Um, that's pretty standard, um, and it holds pretty much holds true every year. Legal services increased by 26% net, based upon the uh, the usage over the last several years, and the fact that um, what's going on in town right now doesn't indicate any relief in that area. In fact, with the collective bargaining issues that are going on, it only is going to increase it. So uh, we're looking at increasing the legal services. That number's minimal, though, right, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in grand uh, you take all those minimals, and yeah, no, you know, it doesn't take long to chew That's through a million bucks. Big percentage. Yeah. Um, liability insurance increased by five percent. There is, however, some good news. <laughs> Health insurance appropriations is expected to remain flat, and th this is a a sign of some of the things that we've done over the last couple years that are really starting to have an impact. So the biggest factors that are, have impacted health insurance is the, um, the, the changes that we've made to the employees' health insurance along with the uh, elected officials' health insurance have had a huge impact on it, as well as the uh, water and sewer no longer coming out of this account, that it's now for the water and sewer employees coming out of the, the water and sewer uh, account. So all those factors together um, have made a huge difference uh, to the tune of anywhere between 10 and 15 percent is what we would see for increases. That's a lot of money. Workers' comp uh, compensation appropriation is expected to remain flat. The biggest reason for that is probably the, uh, the water and sewer employees um, no longer being on there. And the general fund debt and interest is, is reducing. It reduced last year and it's reduced further this year. 
if, if you recall over the last several years, we have kind of harped that the Appropriations Committee wanted to reduce some of our debt, um, that we felt like too much of our general fund money was going to pay our debt. We're starting to see the, the, uh, the benefits of that. So. Eric, if I may? Yep. The workers' comp, one thing that we should acknowledge is that the employees of the town have been doing a great job over the past year and a half or so at reporting all workers' comp claims when they're supposed to, at making sure that staff are aware of what's safe and what's not safe, and, and following those guidelines, which has reduced the number of claims that we've had and therefore the expense. And so therefore, because our claims have gone down, our premiums have been able to stay lower. So that is due to the employees' hard work and the department head at encouraging their staff to do that. So I did want to acknowledge that that is a result of, of the town employees. So all these items, uh, items added up have really uh, helped. They've, uh, they obviously, it results in the increased revenues available for general fund use. If we're not paying it elsewhere, it makes it available for, for use in the general fund. Some possible changes to the FY 2017 uh, budget, and we've used these in our calculations. They're, they're estimates at this point, but there's been a lot of conversation, a lot of discussion, and we've indicated to the Board of Selectmen that, that you know, the uh, Human Resources Department we think would be a good investment, in fact, probably a money-saving investment over the long term um, for the town. We've kind of set aside $150,000 for that. We're not sure if that's high, low, or appropriate, but that's what we're using at least in our budget calculations. Last year we wanted to increase the OPEB annual payments and we just couldn't swing it and, and still have uh, not used the full levy limit. So um, this year uh, we feel pretty strong that we really need to start putting um, some serious money in toward that OPEB liability. Um, and so for the next several years I think you're going to see us incrementally recommend uh, increases to that. Um, the operational stabilization fund, uh, there were some years in the recent years that we've put no money into the stabilization fund and in the last couple years we've really been light on the amount that we put into the stabilization fund. So we want to increase that by $50,000 and get it up to the $100,000 mark. And we'll talk more about reserves in a few minutes. The capital budget this year will be set at 2% of the previous fiscal year's operating budget. Last year we set it at 1.5% and then we supplemented with free cash to bring it to that 2%. That was an incremental step. This year we're going to bring it to that full 2%. We feel very strong that capital is something you've always got to reinvest in your infrastructure. You can't just let your infrastructure crumble. Capital should be a line item in the budget. It shouldn't be a remaining at the end of the year, what can we afford? Um, so we feel very strong that it has to be a part of our annual budget appropriations. 1.1 Yeah, it's like 1.2. I don't have the exact figure with me. Yeah. Capital? Yeah. It's a little over a million. Yeah. yeah. 1 million 54 or something like that. Is that what it comes out? Yep. Okay. Um, the other thing that we have to do at the last meeting, we established a paid absences reserve fund. Now this $75,000 that we're estimating right now is simply an estimation. It's what we're using right now to plug it in there. We really got to do some, some math and some, some uh, figuring to, to come up with a more realistic number. I'm hoping that goes down, but I don't know if that number is going to go down or, or not. Um, but we established it in the, uh, at the fall town meeting. Next fiscal year we have to start funding it. That will be good news actually for departments, particularly if they're really operating on a lean budget because then if they have a, um, an employee come in that unexpectedly is retiring and, and you all, all this paid absence time, that's what this fund's designed to do and you don't have to scrape it out of your budget and try to find it in your budget. So what does that all bring us to? Our source is at 56 million and our use is at 55.2 million. Leaves us a balance if we taxed the max levy capacity of just over a million dollars, a million sixty-seven thousand dollars. We call that unused levy capacity. This would result in a tax increase of 54 cents versus 81 cents. Of oh, that number, our 38 is capital. Or not capital debt exclusion? No. 
No debt exclusion is in these yet. figures, right? Well, yeah, I'm sorry. The 54, the 54 versus the 81 would be, yes. Right, so out of that, the reality exclusion. 38 is debt exclusion. On both numbers, though. On both numbers. So it's. We're only talking a 16 cent increase. No. Hold on. On the, on the tax rate. Because that's already in. We're already going to pay the debt exclusion. The 38 cents, we're paying whether we pay them to the levy or not. So if that, right. number, if those, that number includes the 38 cents, that is exclusion. It would be 31 cents, I think. Yeah, it's 31. But my point is, though, well, even still 23 cents of uh, increase in the tax rate by 23 cents. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but the bigger point the bigger point here is that it would stay at 54 cent increase, not an 81 cent increase. If we tax the max levy capacity, it would be 81 and 81 right. with the debt exclusion. Does this do us better on the projection of the 25 million <coughs> years? How much further out does it put us? Well, you're not. If you follow this trail. Th if you follow this trail, we can probably get three or four years out of it. That's it. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this well, it, but. We're all hoping, you know, and we're all banking on that values go up sometime in that. But if we do nothing, you know, then, then I mean, we, you can see the train coming, you know. It's, it's, it's a matter of, uh, yeah. Um, that uses figure, does that include the possible changes like the HR department? It does. Okay. Those numbers that we used, uh, Paul, were our estimates. They're not really based on anything particular. They could go up or down a little bit, they're, but they're what we thought were reasonable estimates to use at this at this point. Yeah. So our budget recommendations <coughs> would include that most departments would be limited to an overall two percent increase, and I can't emphasize this enough. Only if justified, and we have to keep in mind that some contracts are not yet settled. So what do I mean by all that? That doesn't mean that a department who has employees that are currently in contract negotiations would be able to come in, show a 2% increase, not take anything into account for future contractual obligations and expect to get it. The 2%, the, the, the how do I put this? The 2% the would be only if you could really justify the increases. They wouldn't be an automatic. I think the approach that we're trying to take is that for, for every cent on that tax rate that we can prevent from going up, we'd like to do that. So this is the, one of the key points that I kind of wanted to bring out on all this, and this is one of the reasons that we had the school committee, the Board of Selectmen, and the, the Board of Public Works coming in tonight, was there's an opportunity here it doesn't mean that we can't do initiatives. It just might mean that we have to look at prioritizing those initiatives and then prioritizing them against maybe some of the other services that we have. In other words, you might have to look at resources here to help fund resources over here. We're, we're starting to get to that point, but we can't do that alone. It, it takes collaboration. And that's really what we're hoping to, to spark here tonight. No use of the free cash. Um, our reserves now are at, are at about 6%. The recommended is 8 to 10%. And in fact, it was brought up in our, um, um, yeah, what do you call it? The, uh, it was uh, in the review from the auditors. The auditors this, this year, right, on, on the low, low amount of our reserves. Reserves are not just free cash, but also the stabilization fund. It's the two combined. So that's another reason why we want to continue to add to the stabilization fund. Is that 8% of operating budget? Yes. That's my, my presentation. Is it everybody excited now? <laughs> no, no, no. No, this is very positive. I mean, it gives direction very early. We're just beginning our budget process, especially the school department. Yeah. It's very clear direction now that we can get this word out to uh, from the uh, for the school community about what we're looking at. This is this is extremely positive for us. I appreciate it. it really is. 
Oh, yeah. Have you set a timetable? I know that's not really for everybody. Have you set a timetable for like getting budgets back to you for review? We have. We're going to lay all that out um, next week when we. December 1st. Uh, I'm sorry, December 1st. Yeah. Is that? No, it's not next week. No, it's the week after, after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. No, so the week after Thanksgiving, when we when we meet with all the departments and everything, um, okay. I don't have the dates here with that's me, Paul. So, but yes, we have. Let me sure to visit. We have set all that up. Any other questions? Eric. Oh. For planning purposes, you can assume everything needs to be back to appropriations the first week of January. Yeah, January 12th, actually. Budgets are due to us on January by January 12th. Set. The tax rate just was set this year, right? Yes. Yeah, coming in the tax rate. Yes. The tax rate this year is twenty one twelve. Well, it all depends. Forecasted. Forecast. If we use the full levy limit. If we don't, it would be the. Twenty two twenty one twelve. Twenty two twenty one twelve. Right. Right. The twenty one fifty would be the twenty one twelve. Twenty one fifty. 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 Twenty one Other questions? So, I guess uh, I was kind of hoping that maybe there'd be some some dialogue, um, you know, between the boards and, and the boards and in our, in our committee. Um, I mean, does everyone tend to agree with this direction? Not agree? I mean, there's got to be concerns out there. I know I'm throwing it all on you at once, but um, I, I'm kind of hoping. What I really had hoped to do was start that dialogue um, this evening. Eric, I think one of the things the school department is very concerned about, and then compared to the capital planning committee, we requested $17 million for the capital projects, and there's nothing in there that's not realistic. So <clears throat> to say that we're not going to do be able to do debt exclusion, or we're going to try to not do debt exclusion to fund projects going forward, we're at a loss on how we're going to fund things. I know we're looking at the operating budget right now, uh, but at $1.1 million for capital expenditures, we're not. We're going to have leaking roofs within a year or two, probably a couple of years. I don't want to. The sky's not falling, but it's not a great picture. So, we as a committee have collectively decided to move forward and try to figure out how we're going to fund projects, major uh, touch at least each building in some sort of substantial way in the very near future, um, because we feel it's our responsibility. So, I just bring that up because I know we're talking about tax rate. We're talking about debt exclusion. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to need some help on how to figure this out. We're going to come forward with some proposals and such, but it's going to mean spending some money. Um, so we're going to have to collectively figure out how to spend, how to find that money, how to fund it, I guess. Yeah, to kind of support you, you know, say, Eric, we've already developed a subcommittee that once we get our, get our proposals in order to reach out to all the other boards in town. Mm -hmm. So that's a, so that we'll see that happening with the school reaching out, appropriations committee, DPW, et cetera. To kind of put together because we're not the only buildings in town that need to be looked at. So looking for kind of a global approach for the whole town with all the partners being involved. I can tell you that um, when I was chairing the capital planning committee, you're talking about buildings. We looked at a similar project with the fleet. We looked at um, all the DPW vehicles that they had, police. Uh, school department, buses, uh, you name it. We, we compiled all the data. We included, you know, an anticipated life expectancy um, with a current cost replacement value because what we thought we, we thought what we'd like to do is start allotting so much money a year towards fleet replacement. When we got it all together, what we discovered was we can't afford the fleet that we have. Yeah. That if we had allotted the money, for fleet replacement, we would have eaten up so much of the, the, the capital budget there'd be very little room for other things. So this is part of those, you know, that, that collaboration that, I, that we really need to have in, in, the, in the town amongst the different boards and, and everything else because we, we just can't afford everything at once. So I think we need to start, I don't know, thinking of other ways, thinking outside the box uh, to do this. Um, but the focus really tonight is not in the debt exclusion area, but more on the uh, not using the, the full levy capacity um, for now and quite frankly, uh, at least the foreseeable future until we get some movement in the property values. Uh, and we do that really as a, as a defense mechanism 
to prevent us from running into that wall because otherwise the meeting that we'll be having then is, you know, here's the reductions to everybody. So, John, we didn't do an official meeting, so I'm just asking a question about her. so the utilities that we're getting for, um, from from Hamden. Is that factored already in, or is I mean that's a hundred grand or something a year? Is that kind of some money that we have to work with that's maybe not yet projected yet? Well, the electrical that we're getting from no, it's not projected in this. In fact, what we just did was so take that line and everything else and added the two percent in our projections. Okay, but that's a perfect example of you know when I say if you don't need the full two percent, you know. Well, there's a perfect example of you, you may not need the full 2% in that line uh, just because of that. So, uh, it, uh, and all those things are gonna have a huge impact. When you start adding them all up, it doesn't, you know, you say, well, it's only $100,000. Right, that's what I'm saying. So we're million about bucks, 50s so. and 100s make a big difference. So we gotta do. be looking at where can we get back some 50s and 100s in savings yep. for things we could possibly do as opposed to just contract out or mm -hmm. like that electrical is a pushback to us. So. I think everybody's got to kind of think along those lines as well as where can we where can we get something back yep. off yep. of our expenses to, so we can do roofs at other places. I, right? I think revenue other generation places. efficiencies are, are really, I mean, there's not a whole lot of options to the community um, except, like I said, revenue opportunities and, and generation I mean, uh, efficiencies. And, uh, certainly the, the appropriations has um, been thinking that way for the last few years. Uh, you know, we kind of want to get everybody thinking that way, but yeah, that's a, a good example, John. And the unions are aware of this in the negotiations because the last thing you do seems like layoffs would be symbolic unless you have a lot of layoffs to bring everything under control. Yeah, I, I don't know what the unions are aware of or not because simply, quite simply, this committee doesn't meet with the unions. Yeah, because the last thing you want to do is start laying off teachers. I don't want to lay off anybody, but but if we hit that twenty-five dollar per thousand cap, a reduction in services is the only way to meet it. I mean, there's just there's simply no other options. So either we find those efficiencies now and prevent that, or if we just let it happen, then I, I quite frankly I don't know how any of us as elected or appointed officials or or anything can can allow it to happen. If you can see it, you can prevent it, and I think that's what we're working toward is preventing it. So, nothing else? Okay, right. leave. Well, I left everybody with a <laughs> feeling upbeat. And <laughs> it is. Yeah, I think we tend to agree that, that um, over the long haul, having a, a, a you know a decent HR department is, is actually going to be a cost saver. I, I, I really do believe that. You might have to invest in the beginning, but over the long haul, it'll be a cost saver. Immediately, I think you'll start seeing reductions in the, the ever-growing use of legal services. Exactly. So that's just one minor example, but it's it's one example. So. All right, well, that was, uh, that was our pretty, you're welcome to stay for the rest of our meeting, which trust me is gonna be really short because I <laughs> had a long day, but that, that was our uh, presentation. Uh, we do welcome uh, feedback, input, communication with all the boards as we go through the budget process this year. Um, like I said, these, these kind of decisions, they, they can't be made in the back and they have to be made as, you know, as a group and with some collaboration, so. Thank you all again. Thanks, sir.